Thank you all very much for coming. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Shelley Smith and I'm the UK sales director at Seismic. So, welcome to Seismic Flair. So, we're really excited to have you here tonight. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm really excited to have you here tonight and we really hope you enjoy the night that we've got planned. This is the third year we've organised uh, an event like this and it's just got bigger and bigger. And it's so good to see so many familiar faces that we work with on a day-to-day -day basis and lots and lots of new ones so um, do feel free throughout the uh, uh, night to tweet our hashtag is seismic flare so, taking the mickey out of my t-shirt <laughs> <laughs> so tonight we've got um, uh, Mark and Anna who are going to come in and they're going to talk to you uh, uh, present to you the presentation they've put together and we've also got Andrew Warren uh, from Ferriff, and he's one of the directors over there, and he's going to talk to you about how we've worked really closely together. One of the things they do really well is sort of get us involved really early on, and we help them with the tools that they to provide them to help them more efficient along the way. So 2014 for us is all about intelligence, and it's about us providing you guys with the right tools to hit the consumers at the right time. Um, we know that our consumers are all over the place, you know, they're on lots of different devices and they're really, really fast and we need to keep up with them. We need to get the right message, the right person, the right screens, there's so much that we need to think about. Um, and that's why this year we've uh, launched the Open Ad Stack um, initiative and the reason we've done that is pure and simple. Um, for those of you who've worked with us back in the days when we were iBlaster, for us everything is about being innovative about being as engaging and you know just being out there as much as we possibly can. So if there's a partner that can do it a bit better than we can or they've got a really cool tool, we're going to sort of integrate with those guys. And that gives us great scale um, and most importantly it really helps us reach uh, the consumers. And also for all of you lovely people out there, it also helps uh, you be as creative as possible. You know, long gone of the days where, you know, you had to sit there writing loads and loads and loads of code. Uh, we've done all that bit for you. You know, we can, we've now got these tools that help you, you know, build that story and help you be as uh, creative as, as you possibly can. And then what it also does for the uh, advertiser is it actually helps them, you know, be more intimate with their, uh, with their audiences. But most importantly, and the reason why they sort of get us on their books in the first place is, you know, they want to drive more revenue and make more sales. So with all of that in mind, uh, you obviously need as many tools as possible. So I'm now going to pass you over to Mark Knorr, who's the head of creative services, who I'm sure many of you have worked with over the seven years of working here. Um, and he's going to talk to you about the journey and how we're going to help you get there. So over to Mark. Thanks very much, Shells. That was a great intro. <laughs> Hi, guys, and welcome. It's so good to see so many faces here today, so many familiar faces and so many new faces here today. It's great, and I can't wait to share a beer or two with you later. Now, I want to start off today by talking about something that's very important to us, something that exists in this room today, and that's the audience. But before I do... <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> Before I do, <laughs> I'd like to introduce you to somebody. <laughs> Miss Anna Cameron. <laughs> Hi. Hi, everyone. I'm Anna. Thank you so much for being here tonight. I'm so glad you could make it. Yep, I work with Mark in the UK Creative Support Team, as some of you already know. And tonight, we want to take you through a journey of where we think the industry is heading. We want to touch base upon social trends, we want to touch, pay, touch base upon video trends and mobile trends and just consumer trends as a whole. And we've also got some cool, amazing demonstrations that you guys have created. And yeah, so without me babbling, Mark, can you tell us what's up? <laughs> Put me right on the spot there, thanks. <laughs> so before I do, uh, I want to talk about the audience as I mentioned. And it's very important that we keep the audience in our creative thinking and put them at the center of our creative thoughts. Now, the audience are surely you guys. 
it's me, it's Anna, it's everybody in this building today, we are the audience. And we need to consider them when we're creating our ads. But it's also fair to say that not one size fits all. Our audience are using different devices and are interacting with information in different ways. In fact, it's true to say that there's different trends and habits. For example, I like to watch my catch-up TV on my tablet. So I'm currently into like bad, uh, Breaking Bad, and I watch it on my Netflix app. Love it. If you haven't seen it, watch it. <laughs> um, but for some of you out there, you might actually like watching video on the way to work or on a journey, for example. Different traits and different ways in the way we interact. So what we must understand is that we're living in a world where a whole generation is being born digital. It's exactly that, Mark. When I take my sister, for example, she's just had an eight-month-year-old baby, and he's already on Twitter, he's on Facebook, he's on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> he's got his own hashtag, he's got hundreds of likes by... He's actually quite famous in his own right, but, you know, it's quite funny. But if you take about 20, 30 years ago, whenever we were writing our Santa list, you know, you'd, you know, you'd find your toy in the toy store and you'd write it down and you'd give it to your mom or put it under your Christmas tree. That's not even the case anymore. These days, kids want things at the instant. They want things at the ready. And your Santa list has turned into an Amazon URL link. And it even makes you think that even Santa has to become digital. And it's true. If Santa's rethinking digital, we all have to start rethinking digital. <laughs> now, if we have a look at this picture... It's true to say that the way we're interacting with information these days are on different devices. And there you can see three different people all consuming information on different screens. And this brings us into our multi-screen context. And by context, what do I mean? I mean, where was the ad seen in the first place? And on what web page was it seen on? And as creatives out there, you need to be putting this at the center of your thinking because with your campaigns, you want to be applying a multi-screen strategy here. That's right. And... In 2013, 20% of all campaigns are currently multi-screen. And according to Media Post, by 2016, 50% will all be multi-screen. So that means we really need to understand what the driving force of this, of this is. And to be honest, it's mobile. So we need to be putting mobile in the middle of our creative thought process. And it's true to say that now. If you're saying mobile first, for example, I mean, the first thing I'd done this morning wasn't to kiss my girlfriend and say, did you have a good sleep? You know, <laughs> good morning. Nah. I checked my emails on my, my phone. I mean, guilty as charged, right? <laughs> yep. Guilty too. Don't even say goodnight to my boyfriend. It's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all my social media, on my phone. But it's become apparent that on average, we're spending 150 times per day on our mobile devices. That's two hours and 21 minutes. Two hours and 21 minutes. We need to really think how we can maximize audience reach with this information. And if you take a look at the word selfie, for example, which is derived from this digital era that we're living in, and it's even now in Oxford Dictionary, and Oxford Dictionary has stated, occasionally selfies are acceptable, but posting a new picture of yourself every day really isn't necessary. <laughs> So we're thinking about mobile first, and it's true to say that mobile, or a mobile device, in fact, is our most trusted device. And here at Seismic, we recognize that that's important. And so for us, we need to be thinking mobile first. For you creatives out there as well, you have to be putting mobile first. It should be the first thing on your mind. Now, there's a little side thought. I mean, mobile leads on to HTML5, right? You heard a bit of this battle that was going on like over a few years where Flash and HTML5 and HTML5 was going to kill Flash. In fact, HTML5 is going to become the new Muhammad Ali and knock out Flash in the <laughs> ring. I mean, guys, that's a crazy thought. And to be honest, in my mind at least, there is no battle. There really isn't any battle going on here. There's no war. It's about utilizing both technologies to maximize your audience reach. So guys, please make love. Feels so good. That is true, Mark. And I bet if, if Barry White was still alive, he'd be driving a cool car like this. But let me show you a campaign from Mercedes, our dual screen, which ran in Spain. And this is doing just that, is utilizing both technologies, both Flash and HTML5. And all the user has to do is click the QR reader, and he's able to interact with the ad using the mobile phone. And you can change the color of the car. You know, you can change 
the scenery of where the Mercedes is driving in. My point is, is that advertisements like this really push up user engagement. They push up the dwell rate. And you can see this from this ad. It's 19.5% dwell rate, which is five times as much as industry standards. And this is both utilizing our HTML5 workspace and our Flash workshop. The trusted Flash workshop that you've been using for many years. You know, you all love and adore the MXP. But we realize that there's a shift. We realize that everything is going to the cloud. So therefore, we've already introduced our ZXP, which you know, is out there for you guys to start creating on the go. And if you have a look here, this is an example from Think Jam, who are here today. And yep, this is our storyboard format, which is available to download off the block section. And it's a double MPU, opens up to a full immersive experience for the user. You know, you can interact, you can look through the parallax effect, which gives the real depth and, you know, kind of like interact with such stuff like your gallery, your media, and you can also view the trailer. If we have a little look here and I will show you a little bit. The noble quest is at hand to reclaim a homeland and slay a dragon. If you awaken that beast, you will destroy us all. So, Anna made a good point there. That was one of our uh, storyboard formats that used one of our, our blocks that you can download now. And guys, you've been using the blocks for ages now. I mean, there's so many different various blocks that you can actually get your hands on to enhance your creativity. And you're familiar with most of our flash blocks, but um, as we mentioned, I mean, HTML5, the industry, it's all changing now, right? So we have to be there right with you and make sure we're providing you the right tools. And so we've gone a step further and added HTML5 blocks. And they're available for you to download and start using straight away. So we know HTML5 is going to take over one day. We're not saying there's a war. I'm not saying there's a battle, but we're saying that HTML5 is organically growing. We know this. There's a shift in the industry, and we need to be there with it. And I want to take this further and have a, a look at the job trends. Now, I'm not saying I'm looking for a job or anything, guys, but <laughs> I wanted to show this slide because if you look at the job trends from 2007 to 2013, the demand for HTML5 developers has grown rapidly. In fact, 350% growth. And what I'm saying here is, if HTML5 is organically growing as a technology, then we all have to move with that and grow along with it as well. You take this on the world stage, I mean, developers actively using HTML5, just keep your eye on EMEA, that's 59%. That's massive. And for us, it's about providing you the tools to be right there with you when this shift is happening. And that's where HTML5 Factory comes into play. That's right. It's our UI-based authoring tool available on the platform for you to develop and create off-the-cuff HTML5 banners for all devices. And let's have a look at what it looks like on the platform. You can log in and you can start accessing it straight away. And as you can see here, you can start you can maintain and manage the assets using the layering system. You can drag and drop the components to the stage. There's really no code involved at all. It's just simple drag and drop. You've got your pin interest, your YouTube and your image gallery, which have been, became available from this year. And we also have our an actions and animations. You can really start, you know, engaging and creating really, you know, great creations. But uh, what about for you developers out there and all you coders? Now, listen, I'll be honest with you now, right? As Seismic, we'd absolutely love all of you to use our tools. Just use Seismic tools. That's it. <laughs> we'd be happy with that. That's fantastic. That's not reality, though. And the reality is this. As we look at the industry and as it grows and as HTML5 organically grows, we need to approach you guys with an open way, an open source. And so our workshop zip files is the way to go here. So you can download our zips and you can have access to our HTML, our CSS, our JavaScript, and start coding it in exactly the way you want. And further to that, you can use any program you wish. So if you want to use Adobe Edge, do so. What we don't want to do is put barriers in your way and close doors. We want these open, and we want it seamless. All we want you guys to do is just create. That's it. That's right. And this is an example of just that. This is a Nikon campaign, and it's using our interstitial block that you can download from the, work, from the blocks page. 
with their 360 view feature. And the, the user can literally just go around and kind of like, like view a 360 view of the camera and really dive in and look at kind of like the technology sides of it. But it really is a good example of how intelligent creativity has evolved. But, you know, we've talked about mobile first, but we're missing one huge part, and that's app first. We really do need to be thinking app first. And 82% of users spend time on apps rather than mobile web. Now, bear in mind, 90% of those apps that we download are rubbish, but <laughs> we don't really use them. But yeah, what I'm trying to say is that, you know, we recognize this, and that's why we've became compliant with the IAB's standard, MRAID 1.0, and which, if I don't know if anybody you know, uh, any one of you knows, it stands for Mobile Rich Media Ad Interface Definitions. But basically, it's just an open standard that we are able to, you know, kind of like upload our ads easily so that you guys can start creating and it can really be an easy, effective way. Not only that, we are coming soon. We've got our MRA 2.0, which will allow for much more functionality and much more really great creative advertisements. And so it's good to see this. I mean, we're thinking mobile first, now we're thinking app first. But how do you make your ads more relevant to fit your audience? And Shirley mentioned it right at the start of the program. It's about pinpointing your audience, right? So this is where a dynamic creative comes into play. I'm sure most of you out there are familiar with our Flash DCO solution. We've taken this further because, again, HTML5 is the emerging technology here. So we now have DCO for HTML. And here we go. I mean, have a look at this Dove campaign here. And you keep, just keep your eye on the messaging. They were able to actually update their ad as the live game was playing for the Six Nations Rugby Tour. And that's a great way of engaging with your audience and making your ad relevant to the user. The other thing it actually does as well is it helps you avoid that creative fatigue, you know, that staticness. You want to be free, and you, you want to make it organic and make it flow. In fact, you want it seamless. No spaces between one part and the next. And that's exactly why we have our responsive banner format. Basically, if you have a look here, it goes from your 970 by 250, and it shrinks right down to your 300 by 50, your mobile banner. And we really want to try and create a solution for you guys to be as creative as possible. But, you know, we've talked about mobile first, we've talked about in-app, we've talked about dynamic creative, we've talked about our HTML5 solutions, but whenever you talk about mobile, we are missing one huge thing here, and that's video. And mobile and video is meeting in the middle, it's merging. That's right, the two worlds are colliding, they're converging, they're coming together. Because let's face it, you can't talk about mobile and not mention video. Having a look at the mobile video traffic, again, from 2012 to 2017, way up in the future, by then, according to Ericsson, we would have consumed at least 7 million terabytes of video. That's amazing. So we know that video's massive, it's big, it's going to take over. In fact, it is taking over right now. And a famous quote, they say, a picture speaks a thousand words. Well, I can tell you right now today, guys, that a video speaks a million, because it gives you that deeper level of connection, that emotional connection to your user. But, but Mark, you know, this great video is great, but 25% in 2013 are still having issues with poor buffering. That's, that hurts the, the brand, that hurts the advertiser, and as creatives, that hurts us overall. And also, not even that, 40% were impacted by low resolution. So we thought about this. We know that, you know, we need to come up with a solution, and that's why we thought about mobile video encoding, which ensures bandwidth-optimized video is served to every user on every screen. And our version of this is adaptive bitrate streaming. Let me just show you an example. This is a low-resolution video served in tablets. But as you can see, there's no buffering issues. You know, the user with the correct bandwidth was able to see the correct video. This is the exact same video served with high resolution to the correct bandwidth and... Again, no buffering issues. So. <laughs> and as we look at video, we must look at how personal it's becoming. In fact, we're becoming more selfish because we're watching video by ourselves. Long gone are the days where the family sit around the fire watching a movie together. 
It's becoming more personal. We're looking down at our tablets or our mobile phones and keeping it to ourselves. And with that in mind, we're actually watching it on the go because we can't wait. We're quite impatient. So we want to be able to watch video at any time. Having a look at the screen viewing times, again, this is TV. I mean, it's the dominant force right now. It's massive. We know this, guys. But look how fast the other devices are catching up. Tablet, mobile, etc. It's increasing at a rapid rate. Exactly. But why, Mark? Why are we putting a TV ad and just putting it online? Why are we taking a 30-second video and just placing it on a smaller screen? Surely that's not the people with a any smile on the box. interactivity or any creative to us. And, you know, video should be more than just awareness. It should be captivating. It should be engaging. It should be interactive. And that's why we've created our video interaction. Hi. We're checking all the smoke alarms on the street. May I take a look at yours? Sure. Come on in. <laughs> there we go. And, uh, can I just use your loo? Will she, won't she? This is quite funny. I know, would you? But this <laughs> 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 But basically, yeah, this is exact Don't worry, point of oh, oh, <laughs> It combines the power of a new cleaner, lime This is what I mean by interaction videos. In the user has the option, Some you know, to choose powerful. which video that Not would she or wouldn't she? You know? pick <laughs> <laughs> so guys, when you're making your creatives and you're developing your your creative ideas, it's about and what I want you to keep in mind is to think about premium experiences with your creative when they're being delivered on these premium properties. Let's have a look, look at this example from Samsung. So they ran this video, and it was created with our video ad designer. And with that tool, you can actually overlay social buttons on top of the video. So immediately, the user is drawn into something that they need to interact with. Breaks out of the linear, right? It makes it more engaging for the audience, engaging for the user. And having a look at the stats, I mean, eight times the amount of engagement here. There was a 51% boost in brand awareness, which is what it's about, right, guys? You're building ads with a brand in mind, and you want users to see it. But further to that, there was twice the intent to actually go out and buy something, and it's about conversions, right? Well, Mark, you talk about social and video. Well, this is Costco meets Titanic. <laughs> if you have a look here, the guy in the background has no idea what's going on. <laughs> But this is what I mean. I mean, you've got your 30-second videos that have been served online, but everything's becoming bite-sized, like advertisements, videos, everything's been shrunk down and been served in your social apps. And, you know, we're using, we're using our social media on a daily basis. We're using it all the time. And we really need to be asking ourselves, where is social going? Well, if you think about social today, it makes up the very fabric of our daily lives. In fact, we're doing it all the time. Whether that's over a coffee or a newspaper, on the toilet, guys. I mean, anywhere, we're engaging with social. But what that offers us is reach and scale. Have a look at this stat. 50 million users, right? It took radio 38 years to get 50 million users. It took TV 13 years. And surprisingly, four years for the internet. But here's the killer. It took nine months for Facebook to get double the amount of users, 100 million users, speed and scale. Yep, that's right. Well, social has overtaken porn as the stat. number one activity <laughs> on the web. The amount of porn that I watch as well. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, be serious here. <laughs> the growth of social networking has really shot up. And if you even take from tablet, for example, in 2011, it, just, it was just introduced. And even by 2013, it's doubled. And, you know, social networking really is the glue that binds the experience of the multiple device usage. But the problem is this. We got it twisted, guys. What do you think social is? Murray, what are you doing? Because it's not oh, posting it's not a picture Murray. or a video on YouTube. Murray. That's not what social is about. Mur what it should be is a more deeper and more engaging experience so that consumers can break out of their natural social ecosystem. And with that in mind, we know that social is now binding and it's becoming a part of our DNA. It's what makes us up today. And so it should be a part of your creative thinking. And with that in mind, let me introduce you to our Republic Project Tool. Now, we acquired this company last year. 
what it's given us the ability to do is to serve ads on social networks, actually serve an ad on Facebook, for example. Now, these guys are a PMD to Facebook. They're a preferred market developer. Exactly, and that's why we have our social fire, which is created from just that. Our social fire enables you to embed your advertisements into Facebook, into Twitter, into that organic news feed. If you can have a look here, this is our Doritos example. It's exactly that. It's playing the video. You're able to interact within the advertisement, and it's all being served within the ad itself, in the app itself, sorry. So, yeah. So, we've talked a lot about social. We've talked a lot about mobile, display, and video. But you might be thinking that there's something missing here, and we actually missed out a section. And that's rich media. But hold that thought, because surely rich media fits into all of these channels. Everything is rich. And we need to stop taking this word and putting it in its own genre or its own box and say, yep, this is rich media. Because everything we talked about today is rich media. In fact, rich, rich media is multi-screen. And as a company, what we want to be able to give you guys is the ability to have your creative freedom. And so with our one tag solution, you're able to just, just do that. And then your ad can be see and, see, see and be seen. <laughs> But it also creates relevance, because relevance is intelligence. And by intelligence, what do I mean? Well, think about what we talked about today. So intelligence is your responsive ad. It's your dynamic creative. It's your interactive video. And with our one-tag solution, we can then say, right, should this ad be served on tablet, or should it be served on desktop? Should it be a flash ad? Should it be a HTML5 ad? But leave that to us. That's the back end. We don't even want you guys touching that. We're going to provide you the tools to do that, and all you've got to do is be creative. And so by providing one platform that successfully engages marketers across all screens and across all media. Thank you very much. We've been seismic. Thanks. I hope you really enjoyed that. So we're now going to pass you over to Andrew over at Ferret, who has been using our platform now for many years, long time, yeah. Um, he's going to talk to you about some successes that he's had using the platform. We, uh, uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm, that's a lovely photo of me. Uh, um, I'm, I'm just really here to talk about um, observations and learnings that we've had over the many years that we've worked. Uh, with iBlaster, <coughs> MediaMind, and now at Seismic. Um, and I, and I, I think th they still stand to this, to this day. I mean, I think, let, let's step back for a, a moment. We're, we're an agency in, Lund uh, in, in Soho. Um, mm. We're a marketing agency. Um, we're one of many agencies out there. I think at the moment there's something like 14,000 different marketing and creative agencies in the UK. So it's, a, it's an incredibly competitive environment. And I think in order to be successful um, as an organisation, um, there are three principles, whether you're a five-man operation or a 50-man operation. Um, it's these three principles. It's the relationships that you have with your clients. Um, it's the creativity that you deliver in your, in your ideas. Um, and also the delivery, making sure that whatever you've suggested creatively um, in that innovation, uh, that it's delivered smoothly, you stick to your promise, um, it comes in a timely fashion and it's on budget. And it's really these two points, creativity and delivery, that I've seen over the years um, that, that Seismic has offered us as a support. And it's, it's something that you should just see um, almost intrinsic in trying to uh, deliver great campaigns. And when I say creativity, we're talking about the minute that a brief or an opportunity comes along, uh, the, 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 when you're gathering the, uh, gathering the team or the people that you're trying to gener generate that idea, I consider Seismic as a, as, as a part of that process, where they're going to not only help you um, with the innovation, they're also going to help you uh, br be a bridge for that technology side of things. And in, this, in this, these lean times that we are, you should really see that as a great gift to... Uh, to, to lean on a partner who's always there for you and has, has, a, has a good understanding of the very latest technology. Um, 
Not everybody has the luxury of having a, an extensive developer team. So do, do think that, take that approach when you're, when you're thinking about those campaigns. Um, and delivery as well. You know, throughout that process, when you've thought about an idea and you've ramped up the innovation and you've, you've gained support from, from the seismic team, um, they will also give you the delivery as well. So I suppose that the point I'm making here is go very early in, in, in the way that you're, you're going to try to tackle, tackle those, um, those campaigns that you might have. Um, just a snapshot over, over the years, some of the campaigns that we've worked on. Um, we, we, have, we have clients within the entertainment sector and a lot of it for them is, is a demand to be innovative like so many other of our clients. And it's always about media first because they know that media first are going to give them better results. Um, and there's been forever a phone call saying, can we meet up tomorrow or can we meet up this afternoon? Because we need to think about what media first that we, we can start offering for, for summer campaigns. Um, you know, over the years, we've, I think we, we've, we can proudly say that we've launched probably about 10 uh, new media f uh, formats um, with with iBlaster and Seismic and 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 um, on that side of things, and uh, we've always been very grateful. But though some of the names for them have been a bit ominous, I think we've had the bulldozer, the the sidekick, the push down. So um, I think you might need to work a bit on the titles on that side of things. But but really, without without these guys, you know, uh, helping us to. To, to, uh, to lean on, we lean on them and say, what can we do? What is it, what is it that, that is the first here? It, it's given us great results over the years and that's why I'm standing here today to, to still talk about formats that, that, that we might have launched last year or the, even the year before or, or prior to that. Um, you know, ultimately, uh, you, you want to be proud of your work and, and you, you will get results from, from pushing that innovation. Um, but also the, the, the people who hold the purse strings are all about the, the, the results that comes with that. Um, and this is where you can substantiate um, some of these approaches and the way that we, we've tackled things where we go, we're very proud of the creative, everybody, everybody likes the compelling sequence or the animation that we show them. Weeks later say, this is what we did with your competitor and they start drooling and they go, we want some of that. And it's the substantiation that all of, all of these results will go up. I've never, I've never not done an innovative new platform where we've stuck to the benchmark levels. So, um, you know, click-through rates go up, dwell time, expansions, um, and initiating videos. I, I, I guarantee that they will go up, and as a result, you'll have a very compelling story to say why you want the second project. And, and this, this kind of mutual work helps everybody. It helps you carry on being innovative, um, the visibility is not really an issue for Seismic, it's about delivering the great work, so you can take, take the glory on that side of things. Um, you know, and, and in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the present climate, obviously, there's a real drive now to think mobile. It's incredible to think that uh, there are more, more tablet and mobile devices in the world than people. So it, it makes sense to start thinking about raising our game. And I think over the last six months or so, we have sought um, to learn from new platforms and Seismic have been part of that process as well. So we've been recently working on a campaign for Universal, A Million Ways to Die in the West, where we wanted to go beyond just a half banner. We wanted to actually think about uh, something that could engage them and it's, it's fun content so we're not actually seeing the whole sequence here and it's, it's in the context of the film, it's a very crude, crude film but coming up with a very compelling message, um, a million ways to die, out in cinemas, tap to shoot your load and hopefully for the guys who brought you Ted and it's a game. So that was, um, that's just, that's something that we, we I think we We'd never, we'd never necessarily kind of put an HTML5 ad within, within, a, within, the, within the unit, but we spoke to Anna and the team. We said, this is what we'd like to do. Can you have a think about it? We were in, the, in a meeting a, a few days later and saying, right, these are the options. Yes, we've never done it before, but we'll come back and we'll investigate. And, and the challenge there was almost to think about what networks would support it. So they did a lot of heavy lifting for us on that side of things as well. So, you know, I think that's a... Um, that's a good example of 
uh, just because something doesn't necessarily exist, it doesn't oh, mean that they can't the help ice. you. Why is it so big? So it doesn't melt. <laughs> that went south so fast! Welcome everybody to the wild, wild world. Everything out here wants to kill you. <laughs> What's with this? So there you go. And ultimately, it's not just results for you, uh, for your clients, but it could potentially be for you uh, in, in the form of awards. And, you know, that's, that's where um, they, they, um, we've seen results. There you go. Is that, is that all right? Yeah. Oh, thank you very much, Andrew. Thank you for all your kind words. So, um, yeah, so that, that's it for this evening. Um, as you can see, we've got tons and tons of tools. I can think of like three that we've just launched last week. It is really important, as Andrew said, to sort of keep in touch with us as much as possible. You know, don't just get in touch with us when you want to QA and test your ads. Get us involved as early on as possible. Um, we're constantly coming up with new uh, formats. We've got contracts with the likes of MSN and lots of other publishers where we have to constantly come up with new formats for them that will be just exclusive to Seismic. Um, and just, yeah, really look at us as a, an extension of your team. And with that, uh, if everybody would like to go and have a drink with us uh, and have a good evening, uh, the drinks are actually going to be in the uh, black room, which is to the back. But thanks again for everyone for coming, and we hope you enjoy it this evening. Thank you. <laughs>